Hey, this is Don Tess, and uh, I'm going to make a video based on Daniel Bryan to smart brush these accusations that he's not a good wrestler. And how I believe movesets, in terms of top guys in WWE and the way Vince McMahon books and the way his dad books, the fact that Daniel Bryan is doing not that many moves, he's only doing three or four moves, it shouldn't bother anybody. And I will cite, you know, history and other top faces. And also, I will cite something else I don't, I, I, that not many people are talking about. If the, the fan favorites of YouTube, some of the fan favorites, like Cesaro and Seth Rollins, if they were moved into the top spot, how they would be booked and how their matches, matches would go. And would they be any different than Daniel Bryan's? And what proof would you have that they would? Now, I'm going to first start off by citing some history. Now, characters aside, because characters personal preference, I'm just saying facts, what they did in the ring. Hulk Hogan only did two to three moves during a long period of time in WWF when he was the top guy. Steve Austin mainly did punches and kicks, and, you know, just, and that's all I did pretty much throughout the whole entire match. John Cena also as well. John Cena probably has the most diverse moveset of any top guy, which no one gives him credit for. And Daniel Bryan also has a very short you know, more limited moveset. When Daniel Bryan first entered the WWE, he had a much more, he had a much wider moveset, which consisted of German suplexes. And, and I'm not, I don't know all the suplexes names, so I'm not a wrestling nerd like that, but a lot of, he had a lot more moves, let's just put it that way. You can just look it up online. It's, it's not hard. It's a few clicks away. And he just doesn't suck out of nowhere. Basically what happened was, when you're the top guy, you don't do as many moves because you were getting beat up the entire match. Look at Hulk Hogan and Stone Cold. What did they do the entire match when they were top guy? They got beat up the entire match. They'd come back with three to four moves and they'd win the match. It happened all the time. Now, I don't know much about WWE pre-Hulk Hogan, but I have watched a few Bob Backlund matches and I do have read about Bruno Sammartino and Pedro Morales. And from what I saw in the Bob Backlund matches, so someone can prove me wrong and say he's, he's at different matches like this. But I've seen a few matches. Most of them consist of him getting the ass kicked, his ass kicked all the time. And then he comes back and he wins. Or he might lose, but he'll mostly just come back and win with a submission. And at 20 minutes to get beat up. Now... Hacksaw and Jim Dunning, which is not in WWE, I've seen a match where he's gotten beat up on the clothesline and won. Now, that is, you know, and the fact that people are upset about Daniel Bryan doing the same thing, it baffles my mind when there's so much history that supports an argument like mine. Because you have every top guy in the history of WWE that had real staying power did less moves. What are Shawn Michaels known for? A atomic drop, the elbow drop, super kick. He's not known for much that, much else. Back drop, maybe. But what's Daniel Bryan known for? Kicks, yes lock, diving headbutt, and, you know, the elbow when he runs on the outside and gives the guy a knee to the face, the running knee in the ring. John Cena's known for the spin around power bomb, the AA, but he's known for a lot more stuff. And Steve Austin's known for stopping the mud hole, whatever thing in the corner, giving a stunner. I don't. I think that's all I did. Someone can correct me on that, but just tell me when he's a top guy, not when he was a heel in 2001 or before he turned a top guy around 1998 and mid 1997, when he was still a heel. If you want Bret Hart, that's that doesn't count because he was a heel. Um, Hulk Hogan, big boot, leg drop, clothesline occasionally, punch, kick. All top guys in the history of WWF, dating back to Hulk Hogan, including Shawn Michaels, were known for a few moves. Now, why Daniel Bryan is treated any differently from the Smartbusters is beyond me. Because I just went down a list of five relevant top guys in WWE, including Daniel Bryan. Each of them are known for about five moves. That's it. Why is Daniel Bryan treated any differently? Uh, that's a case that is is not. I can't figure it out, honestly. Why? Why? When every other top guy in the history of WF, character aside, had five moves, but Daniel Bryan isn't allowed to, he should have more than five moves, is. I don't understand it. Now, on to my other part of the video. If Antonio Cesaro and Seth Rollins, two guys of Smart Brothers, both adore, 
if they were put into Daniel Bryan's spot, do you honestly think that they would be known for any more than five moves? What kind of history would you be able to cite? What kind of facts would you be able to cite to suggest that they would continue to use the same moveset that they have now as mid-carders, that they have now as mid-carders slash, slash, you know, main eventers? What kind of history would you be able to cite that they would keep the moveset as the top guy? Are you, it's hard to be able to cite that. And doing a research paper in college, you have to cite sources. You would have no sources to cite. The place would be blank. You would fail the paper. You'd fail the paper. You'd have to retake the class. That shows that it's a failure of an argument. Sorry, guys. You're really nice. But is, it is, that is a failure because if you can't tell me any, if you can't give me any proof that they would keep the same moveset as the top guys, then you can't, that's a failure of an argument. Because they have a large moveset now, but once they're a top guy, why would they be any different than the other top guys who were known for five moves? And Darren Brown was known for a wide variety of submissions before he became the top guy. He was known for a lot of stuff. But now he's a top guy, he's known for five things. Why would it be any different with those guys? And why wouldn't you start hating them for it? You probably, you probably won't start hating them for it because you were on, you, you on YouTube already you know, praising those guys. But you would blame WWE most likely. Why is it WWE's fault for those guys? And why wouldn't it be WWE's fault for Daniel Bryan? That's my spiel. I think I'm right. I do. I really do. I hope I'm right.